and they've gone without running Lion. They set off in the group one, Bet Fred Oak starting uphill. Heartache tonight was quite sharply away, saved the last dance too, with Sea of Roses on the inside, the yellow jacketed Bright Diamond. Soul Sister is wider out. And then back to Eternal Hope and Red Riding Hood and Mammon June towards the inside of Carnarfon as they swing round a right-hander into a little bit of shade and making their way up the hill. And it's Sea of Roses who leads the way to heartache tonight. Then Red Riding Hood improving up on the outside, followed by Stable Companion, Save the Last Dance. Ryan Moore just glancing down to his left. Then Eternal Hope, Bright Diamond round the inside, Soul Sister further back, Mammon June. And then at the back is Carnarvon as they continue, continue to climb. And shock, uh, a shock at the start. Running Lion hasn't taken part in the race as they run uphill still. And it's Sea of Roses that leads the way. Heartache tonight. Out wide Red Riding Hood. Bright Diamonds on the inside of Save the Last Dance. Then Mammon June, Eternal Hope Carnarvon and Soul Sister and Frankie de Tory just about the back markers now. About eight lengths behind the leaders. Turning left-handed and beginning the run down towards Tattenham Corner. Sea of Roses leads the way to Heartache tonight. Court three wide is Red Riding Hood. Bright Diamond is back on the inside from Save the Last Dance. Then Mam and June, Eternal Hope, Carnarvon and Soul Sister still looking on as they race down inside the final five furlongs and heading towards this all-important left-hand turn. Sea of Roses and Heartache tonight. Red Riding Hood is caught out rather wide. Then behind these Bright Diamonds, Save the Last Dance is just hunting the lead, just being nudged into the bridle by Ryan Moore. Then Mam and June followed back in the field by Eternal Hope, Carnarvon and Soul Sister now making rapid progress down the outside soul sister as they run down the home straight sea of roses heartache tonight bright diamond save the last dance under pressure then Carnarvon but look to the left here comes soul sister behind these mammon june and then behind those eternal hope and red riding hood and soul sister comes to challenge Carnarvon and then on the inside save the last dance who's staying on well racing down towards the final furlong it's soul sister that takes over now from Carnarvon and save the last dance the Musidora winner she's kicking away his soul sister in the hands of Frankie de Dori, de Dori. another farewell classic win for Frankie why is he giving up he wins on soul sister tight for second save the last dance can often ran a blinding race they were well clear then well, the Betfred Oaks was a race of two extremes for John and Fady Gosden with Running Lion rearing in the stalls and being withdrawn, but with Soul Sister winning and winning in magnificent style. Let's concentrate on the positive, first of all. That was a superb performance. Yes, it was, because she had a funny old draw and, and Frankie saw early on he was going to be stacked three, four wide, so he dropped her back virtually to last. So she had to have the class to come down the outside and uh, pass the whole field, which she did. Mm. What were you thinking as you were seeing those tactics being executed? No, I, could, I was really happy when he decided to drop her in and save ground. You can't go three, four wide round here and expect to win unless you're sort of 25 lengths the best. And no, it was, it, was a, it was a great plan B from his viewpoint. And then in the straight, my only feeling was she's coming there nicely, but I have no idea if she'd stay. The family have not got a mile and a half. Her full brother was a mile in France, mile and one maybe, but never beyond. So. I was naturally concerned she wouldn't stay. She showed a lot of speed in the Musidora, but she's come and done it extremely well and showed a great, great attitude. She showed herself to be very, very versatile. I mean, I know it all went wrong in the Fred Darling, but you were starting out over seven furlongs with her. Yeah, she hated the ground, and so Frankie actually very, he gave her a piece of work, which was very nice of him. She appreciated it. It's the right thing if it was heavy. It wasn't soft, it was bottomless. And she's, you know, she trained well and came up to the Musidora very well. And, 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 you know, the stud have been fantastic. And Lady Bamford, I said, I want a runner there. Are you sure? And I said, yes, please, can I? And we did. And the rest is now history. And what do you see her as now? I mean, going into this, you, you've had your, your questions answered about her stamina. So she's clearly a very versatile filly. What do you see for the rest of her campaign? I think anything from a mile and a quarter to a mile and a half. You'd be fine for her. You obviously have races, obvious races, the Irish Oaks. But, you know, I wouldn't be frightened of any mile and a quarter race for her either because she's got the gears. And you've got Emily Upjohn in the same stable as well. Quite a day to have the two of them huge, winning so well. Yeah, a huge day and look, fabulous owners. And, uh, yeah, let's face it, Emily Upjohn is probably a mile and a half, but I think she could come back to an eclipse. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, you, you mentioned the clips yeah. from Emily earlier. Yeah. So the Irish Oaks would be the next step, but then you wouldn't be afraid of dropping down in trip with Soul Sister? No, I wouldn't be. So we'll just see how she is after the race, but she looked pretty cool in here. And how about running Lion? Have you had a report from Thady yeah, about how she is? Yeah, she kicked out. Thady's there. She's back now at the stables. She kicked out and caught her leg on the gate, scraped it, and they didn't want to run her. And they had to open the back gate, let her out, and then she got loose. And you saw Ushin was upset. So he's on the ground, look, she's never done anything wrong in the gate. She's been like a pussycat. I think she's probably getting ready to go and just caught her leg. So they were drawn her. She's absolutely fine. We'll get her ride at home and go to the PDN in 16 days. And from your perspective, I mean, for Thady, um, it was, it's a superb Oaks success. But for you, it's your fourth, isn't it, the fourth Oaks win? It is. And look, you've had bad luck on them too. You know, I, uh, the few got knocked over and, you know, it happens. But uh, it's lovely to win such a fabulous race and looked great to Fred to, to sponsor. And I think it was a big move by him. He's, 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 he's a brilliant man. And finally, part of the Frankie Dottori story. Who writes his scripts, John? I don't know. He had a, he had a good cup of coffee with me before, and I think that, that just got him rolling. Well done. <laughs> that was clearly it. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Well, Frankie Dottori's farewell tour, the farewell year, continues to be written by a Hollywood scriptwriter. This is ridiculous, Frankie. It just keeps happening. It is mental. I'll be honest with you. I thought we had three good ones, three good rides. To have two in the bag already with a derby to go is crazy. <laughs> I, I must, I'm stuck for words, I'm sorry. <laughs> stuck for words. Tell me, tell me, talk, talk me through the race, because you had to make a decision with her draw. She jumped good, and then um, I was looking for somebody's wheel to follow. I didn't want to stock wide. I wanted to get behind Ryan, but William already had that position. So I, then I thought, well, Oshin is out of the way. I thought the one to beat now is Ryan and William. So I put myself behind William to try to get her to relax. The pace was honest. And then we, we come nearly out of Tottenham Court and William just died in front of me. So she's got very little experience. So I thought, you know, I, even if I go a little bit wide, but at least I'll have a cl cl clean air to the straight. And then I had to avoid the other pacemaker. So I went even more wide. And then uh, Connor came upside me and I, I didn't ask for my Philly's ultimate effort. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, just just buy your time and wait till just before the furlough mark. And I did. And then you just on the lap of the gods. She either goes or not. And she did. And that was a great relief. <laughs> and I was able to enjoy all the screaming of the crowd. I went, can you believe I won another Oaks? Could you actually enjoy that final? Time? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, yeah I knew I won. And, uh, and usually it's custom when you win the Oaks, they give you an oak tree. The last one I got for an opponent, I think, or no, it's no four. Yeah. My dog decided to play with it, so she ripped around the garden. So I could do with a new tree, and now hopefully I'll get another one. <laughs> well, I think, think you'll probably definitely yes. get that tree. But how special to be able to actually enjoy yes. the end of the Oaks like that. That must be brilliant in your final year. Yeah, because honestly, you know, I was in the back of the field. When I passed them all, I knew that there was, mm. you know, was nobody behind me. Mm. So I was able to, once I got rid of Connor, then, uh, then I thought, well, nobody's going to come now. And uh, yeah, I was able to, you know, you don't get many opportunities. Uh, maybe with Snowfall, when I was yeah, 20 yeah. lengths clear. Yeah. But, <laughs> but it was great because all the owners are here, uh, the Oppenheimers, the Banff, John Slack, uh, of Emily jo Love John, and all the gang, and the breeders, the managers, the, everybody's here. So to, to go home and say I've done 100% jobs, great. And the way that you've talked me through that race, it, it just talks about all of your experience, isn't it? You know, it, it, that's what that, I mean, that yeah. is what you drew upon to make those decisions, uh, those crucial yeah. decisions. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I would have loved to be fourth behind Ryan, but it didn't happen. So I have to, you know, I, I, I have to ride my horse to see the style of racing. And I thought, you know, she's not experienced enough to go through them. You know, don't be stupid. Just keep it simple, get organized and go and win your race. And that's what I did. I still doesn't know there's another half year to go, but you're going to miss this, aren't you? Well, at the moment, things are going well. <laughs> but you, you can easily mess up in this game, you know? <laughs> Five months is a long time. Look, at the moment, I'm enjoying it, Lydia. Thank you. And arrest tomorrow? And obviously, look, we, I wish the, it was more rain around, but he's a good horse. He deserves a good chance. And uh, the way Johnson and Thady's horses are running, anything is possible. Absolutely. And, and thinking and, of thinking about Emily up John I'm a, I'm a great ander I'm thinking about Emily up John and soul sister how the t how would you compare the two well soul sister she's uh, nowhere near what she's going to be
she's still weak and furnished, but she's got lots of talent. So, uh, you know, I, I, I probably suspect that she'll stay with the three year olds, maybe go to Ireland, something like that. John was suggesting she might be the quicker of the two. Uh, well, not the way Emily went today. Well, well <laughs> he was saying Emily, <laughs> Emily mile and a half horse, Soul Sister maybe, is, and you could go to the Eclipse with her, but he, she was thinking that Soul Sister might be a bit more versatile. What's your perspective? Yeah, look, she's uh, very life frame and she can only improve. She just showed she's very talented, that's all. Okay. Well, I'll see you here tomorrow then after the derby, Frankie. Congratulations. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.